Hey there, Nick Jitakis here. In this video, we're going to go over how to use the cut command to parse out very specific information from a CSV file that I exported from Stripe. Now, the takeaway I cut here, it's not related to CSVs or Stripe specifically. You can basically use it to filter out a subset of information that you want from a file that is semi-structured. Now, it doesn't need to be a CSV file like this or Stripe specifically, but uh, the real world use case for me here was I was parsing out a ton of data from various CSV files and I found myself using the cut tool a lot. So I figured now would be a great time to make a video about that. I've been using cut for really long time, but I don't think I made a dedicated video around it, so here we are. So if you're not using a CSV file, you'll see once uh, we're done with this video, how you can apply it back to your situation at hand. So here we have a CSV file from Stripe. Now I trimmed out a lot of things here. There's only three columns here with the charge ID, uh, the order with the specific thing that was purchased, as well as the status of the payment. Was it complete? Did it fail? Et cetera, et cetera. Now Stripe has something like 56 other columns that you could have here or 56 total, but we can see here that these columns are delimited by a comma, basically comma separated values here. I think that's what the V stands for in CSV. But uh, the takeaway here for me specifically was I wanted to get a list of all the order IDs here, but I didn't want to just get the like order and then zero padded and then the number. What I wanted to get was just a number as an integer basically for all the, all the items here. And uh, cut is going to help us do that because we can basically cut things on a comma, get like the second column, and then basically build things up to the point where all we get back is the number here. So if you're not using a CSV file and you want to delimit things on some other character, you can totally do that. You just want to, you know, take a look at your output file to determine what types of patterns there are. And actually, we're going to see an example of that once uh, we get into the thick of it here. So this cut command starts with running the cut command, and we need to pass in what delimiter do we want to essentially split on. In our case, that is going to be a comma because we're dealing with a CSV file. And then we need to say, well, you know, what column or columns do we care about in this file? So in our case here, we know column one is this charge ID, column two has the order information, and column three has the payment status. So we're interested in uh, the second column here. And I actually forgot to pop in the demo file name here, which makes sense there. It was hanging, just waiting for input. But here we are, right? We just parsed out the second column in the CSV, and we're almost halfway done to what we want to do here. Now, the next situation here is actually interesting because, yeah, it's a good example of how cut can work when you're not dealing with a CSV file. Because, you know, through the power of Unix pipes here, we're going to actually pipe the output of cut to another uh, input of cut. So basically we're going to run cut again here, but we're just going to start cutting this down, right? Basically filtering things down. You know, initially we started with a CSV with a whole bunch of columns. Now we just have this column of information here. And really what I care about so far is just the order information. And here's, you know, an example of what you can do to kind of identify patterns in a file or some type of output. And by the way, cut works with bytes as well, like not actually just uh, string output, but I've never worked with bytes. So, you know, maybe you can find uh, a different video for that one. Uh, it's not going to be in this video, but here, you know, one pattern that we can identify is uh, after the order ID, they all end with a colon here. You can also see like potentially another pattern, right? Uh, after the product name, like basically one of my courses here, there is a, a hyphen and then followed by my name here. Uh, I happen to be the instructor of the course, so the platform that I'm using, it kind of has the idea of multiple instructors and yeah, so we have product and instructor there. Uh, but in our case here, the pattern is uh, the colon. So we can just delimit here on a colon and now we can just say, well, we want the first result there because if we split it on a colon, you know, the first one is going to be the order, the second one is going to be uh, everything else because that's it. So we can do that there and we can see that's the order. And uh, let me clear that. If I rerun it again and just do two instead, we can see that it's everything after the colon, right? So yeah. So now that we have our order, then, and by the way, we're going to go over, I guess, uh, potentially some other little variants of how you can do certain things. Like for example, you know, what if you wanted to get uh, both columns one and two, or maybe everything after the second one, all sorts of like different variants like that. Uh, we'll get there when we get there, but let's, you know, focus on our original problem was, you know, how do I get the, the ID number out of here without having to worry about like order zero or zero padding or whatever. So we're actually going to end up using cut a third time here. And this time we are not going to use any delimiter here because you know, it would be kind of weird if we did a delimiter on uh, zero or something like that, right? Like we could theoretically split it on zero here and just like take the second result, but that would work. But that kind of feels like, mm, I don't know. It feels like it's, it's like an edge case waiting to happen. Uh, so another thing that we could do here is we can just run cut with dash C here. And this is going to allow you to cut on characters instead of a specific delimiter, basically the number of characters. So if you take a look here at the list of output here, ORD is three characters and the zero is four. So what we could say here is we want to cut on the fourth character, but actually you know, we kind of want to get all the characters after a specific point. So in this case, we can just do cut 
uh, C5 here, which is going to get the fifth character. So, you know, O is 1, R is 2, D is 3, 0 is 4, and this 1 here is 5. So we can do that, and now we're going to get the fifth character in the output. Now, in this case here, you know, every single one starts with 1. That kind of doesn't help us, right? We need, like, everything after that. So cut has this really nice feature where uh, you can just put a dash at the very end of your count here for, this works, by the way, for for both the character count as well as the F here, uh, which I actually forgot what that stands for, but we'll look that up in a second here. But in any case, if I run that, then that is going to get the fifth character and everything after that. And that actually gives us the answer that we want. Uh, we have a full list of all of our order IDs. Now, if I wanted to, you know, I can just go export them to uh, some file here. And now, you know, if I were to open up this file, they're all here ready for me to do whatever I need to do, like cross-reference them with some other, other things or, or things like that. Uh, but, you know, also just, very quickly, if you wanted to like sort that, you can just do sort and then boom, you have a completely sorted list of IDs or whatever the heck you want to do. Now, sort is unrelated to this video, but I just wanted to throw that out there. So going back though to our beginnings of uh, where we started here, you know, there is the original CSV file, you know, multiple columns, order, blah, blah, blah. And we got our list of IDs here, just using cut a couple of different times here. Now I did mention, you know, a couple other potential examples that we may want to take a, a quick look at here, for example, if I rewind some uh, information here and we just run this command here, we can see that, you know, we just cut on the comma, we're getting the second result. But let's just say for whatever reason, we wanted to get, I don't know, uh, the first column and the third column, but maybe not the second one. So you can do the first and third column like that. Basically, you can separate which columns you want to get using a comma. So let me also clear my screen here. And then we can see that we got the first column here and the third column there. And that second column is nowhere to be found. So this could be really handy if you just wanted to get uh, a couple of very specific columns out and uh, yeah, all separated by a comma. Now I can also do one and a dash here at the very end and that's going to uh, basically get everything. Um, that actually doesn't help us very much here, but let's do two in the dash here and, and there we go. So we can see that we got the second column as well as the third, the third column. The first column here isn't in the output there. Now splitting on the first one, yeah, that just wouldn't make sense to do, right? Because it's like literally getting the entire file. Now there is another flag that's also kind of interesting to do. So going back to what we ran before, uh, if we do the second column here, right, we just get the order ID stuff, but we don't get the first column and we don't get the third column. Now let's just say that we're dealing with a very big CSV file because Stripe really does have something like 56 columns that you can export out. And let's just say for whatever reason, like uh, you want to have one file getting written out with the second column of information. Like, let's just say that you wanted this entire order of stuff, right? You know, we can just do this and be like, I don't know, uh, I'll put second column or something like that. And now we have a file with just the second column in it. But now let's just say that we wanted to get every other column except for the second one. Now in Stripe's case, there's if there's 56 columns there, you know, it's going to be kind of lame if you had to like do three four or five, like all the way to 56, right? That would be uh, a lot of typing and very tedious and, you know, prone to human error. And like, what if something changes? Like lots of different things that can go wrong there. Uh, so what we can do here is we can add the uh, complement flag here. And then if we run this one, that will actually give you uh, everything that's not the second column. So if the second column is just those order information, here we get the first column and the third column. Uh, but all we had to do there was add the complement flag. So it's basically like the opposite of the, uh, whatever was returned before, you know, without that flag. So then, you know, if you really wanted to, we can just do like, you know, everything, uh, but second column, I don't know, like whatever you want, right? And now, you know, we have two files here. You know, this one has uh, everything but the second column and the other one has just the second column. So that is kind of nice to do. Um, I have not used that very much in practice, but it is available. And speaking of like what's available, well, we can do man cut here and we're also going to find out what that one F, ah, there we go. So the dash F flag, it stands for fields. So yeah, it just says print the line containing no delimiter character unless SS, SS specified. But yeah, for me, honestly, most of the time I'm just using F and some number, the column that I want or whatever uh, number that happens to be as well as characters, which is also very useful because as we saw, you know, it allows you to like strip just you know, X number of characters out. And you can also combine um, the dash, like if you wanted to do like one dash three or something like that with the C flag that will get the first three characters. So you can put a range there just like we saw with the F flag. And you know, there's the uh, complement flag here. It just says, uh, yeah, complement the set of selected bytes, characters, or fields. So yeah, it also works with uh, dash F. I should have mentioned that as well. So uh, actually, I mean, I should have, Mentioned that it also works with dash C as well. So let's get rid of some of those outputting stuff here. And if I go and rerun C dash D, like, I don't know, just 
5 again, like, it, you know, we didn't parse out previously what it was before. But if we do C5 here with complement, this is actually giving us the opposite of the fifth character. So I don't know if you noticed this, but like this ID is missing the B here. So it used to be like ABC123. Uh, that's actually not very clear. So let's do, I don't know, maybe three and then underscore should disappear. Yeah, there we go. We can see there's no more underscore there. Why? Because, you know, if we just cat this file out, then uh, yeah, the underscore was the third character. So with the complement on the characters, it's going to get everything but that one character that you decided. Uh, well, the number of the character, whatever it happens to be there. So that is basically it for the cut command. Uh, let me know in the comments below what your latest cut victory was, or you know maybe the last time you used it in either you know a string of different commands that you're running, or maybe to solve some specific use case. I do find myself using the cut command a lot, especially dealing with CSV files. But you know, like I mentioned before, it's not always about CSVs. Maybe you just have um, I don't know, like a, a space separated list of things, like you can. Also cut on a space character and uh, yeah, that's it that's gonna be about it for this video so let me know how it goes in the comments below if you like the video please give it a thumbs up because it really does help a lot thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video